One of the key questions that always arises with popular APUs, such as the Ryzen 5 5600G that I reviewed towards the end of last week, is once I'm done with the APU portion, I've been able to save enough money to put in a graphics card into my system, how well does the chip actually do? Is it good enough to play video games? How much performance am I actually missing out on? Which these are the questions that I'm gonna seek to answer in this here video. So on the surface, there's actually not that much that's distinguishing the 5600G from the 5600X. They obviously look like mostly the same chip besides the difference of a single letter on the actual integrated heat spreader. They look like Ryzen 5 chips. And honestly, the similarities don't really stop even under the hood. They both have the same six cores and 12 threads. They're both based on the Zen 3 architecture, as opposed to all of the laptop APUs, which get really confusing. Whereas one's on Zen 2, the next one's on Zen 3, 5500 use Zen 2, 5600 use Zen 3. It's really confusing when AMD names APUs. So this isn't something to take for granted. It's actually a pretty big deal that they've done it here. They're both unlocked for overclocking. They both have a TDP of 65 watts and the same rated memory spec from AMD of 3200 megahertz. But that doesn't mean there's no differences between these chips. When it comes to clock speed, the 5600G has a higher base clock of 3.9 gigahertz versus the 3.7 on the X. But the X has a faster boost clock at 4.6 gigahertz, whereas the G comes in at 4.4 gigahertz. There's also the difference of the L3 cache. The G has 16 megabytes, whereas the X has 32 megabytes. And this is something that AMD actually made a pretty big deal about when they launched Zen 3. Having all of that cache that's accessible easily to a single die made for some of the performance enhancements that we saw on the Ryzen 5000 series. So it's going to be interesting to see how much half that cache actually leads to different performance on the 5600G. And the last discrepancy between these two chips that likely won't make a big difference for most consumers is that the G can only support PCI Express 3.0, whereas the X can support PCI Express 4.0 and get the advantage of faster SSDs, potentially not from GPUs, but just the general speed that comes with those new NVMe 4.0 drives. So now that we know what's under the hood of these two guys, let's go put them on the benchmarking station and see how big that difference actually really is. So this is the system that we did all of the comparisons in. It has an MSI B550 Gaming Plus motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM running at 3200 megahertz, a two terabyte NVMe 4.0 Sprint Rocket Plus drive, as well as the G GPU, which is going to be the RTX 3060. I believe the 3060 gives us a really good comparison of where these chips are going to fall in mainstream systems, especially since this is the graphics card that came with the pre-built that I bought the 5600G with. I would have tested it with a higher end GPU to actually find out the exact performance difference, but this is the fastest graphics card that I have on hand because I gave away my RTX 3080 to one of our subscribers. You should totally check that video out right up there. So we're testing everything with a 1080p monitor and we're running it at settings that I would expect people would do with a 3060, which is the highest settings possible. But before we get into the gaming benchmarks, let's look at CPU versus CPU in something like Cinebench. And what we see from the beginning is that the differences under the hood between the 5600G and 5600X actually do make somewhat of a difference. In Cinebench R15, the X was only 2% faster in multi-core score, but 12% faster in single core. However, the latest Cinebench R23 paints a slightly different picture with the multi-core difference being 5% and the single core difference being less at 8%, which shows that the 5600X is obviously the faster of the two chips. But let's remember that we're getting 92 to 94% total CPU performance out of a chip that has a GPU baked into it, which is still really respectable considering that the Zen 3 architecture was a huge step up over Zen 2. I would expect the 5600G is going to beat something like a 3600. However, again, I don't have one of those on hand to do the actual testing with. But now let's talk about video games with the 3060 and the X versus the G because that paints a slightly different story than the CPU benchmarks. So what I found is that in a lot of games, you're getting very similar results. Again, we're not hitting the CPU bottleneck as hard as we possibly could because I'm trying to test a more realistic scenario. But in Horizon Zero Dawn, the X was only 3.8% faster. In Fortnite, the difference is only 1.5%. In Cyberpunk, it was 0.18%, which is within the margin of error. Devil May Cry, came in at 3.65% in favor of the X. Crisis Remastered, probably the biggest jump so far, coming in at just under 10% faster on the X chip. The Witcher 3 was 7.8% faster on the X. Death Stranding was 3.9%. 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider was 4%, GTA 5 was 3.2%, COD Warzone was 9.8% faster on the 5600X, Assassin's Creed Valhalla was 3.65% faster, and Borderlands 3 was 1.93% faster. So those are all the games that the 5600X clearly won in. The 5600X in most games is going to be the faster chip, but we're not really pushing ourselves outside of the bounds of what you would expect a 5600X to do. It's just a few FPS lower. In games that are running over 60 FPS, they're still gonna run over 60 FPS on the 5600G versus the 5600X. But there are a couple games where this was not the truth. So there were two games that the 5600G was faster in, which for some reason, Red Dead Redemption 2 decided the 5600G was gonna be about 5% faster than the 5600X. I ran this dozens of times. Red Dead Redemption 2 just likes to be weird with how it runs on different settings and so there you go, that's it. The other game that the 5600G won in was Metro Exodus, but this was only 0.5 FPS difference, again, within the margin of error. The big game, the thing that actually stood out the most was the Valorant benchmark. So once we start getting into these higher FPS esports titles like Valorant and CSGO, that's where the 5600X is gonna start to spread its legs and show off that L3 cache advantage it has, as well as just the fact that it's faster at single core than the 5600 G because Valorant was 50% faster on the X versus the G, 422 FPS versus 280 FPS. This was tested across multiple different maps with each setting making sure that it was there and the 5600X destroyed the G. So if you're looking to get the utmost out of your CPU performance, you probably want to pick up the 5600X and things like Valorant and CSGO because it's going to crush those titles more than the 5600G could. But if you're playing more AAA titles, single player experiences, and heck, even other esports titles such as Fortnite and COD Warzone did just fine on the 5600G. There really wasn't a huge substantiating difference. It's going to feel like the same experience on both of the chips because they're so close in performance that it's honestly not a huge gap. I'm confident that if I gave you two systems with the 5600G and a 5600X side by side, plopped on a game like Cyberpunk, The Witcher 3, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, or even Fortnite, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between which system is which. If we turn off all of the counters, turn off all the FPS measurements, you wouldn't know what the difference was because they're that close. So I think the 5600G does a remarkable job at being a great CPU. AMD has really crushed it with this. You should definitely check out our previous review of this chip that we did so you get an understanding of how it performs as an APU, how it plays games as just the chip, and I'll have upcoming videos comparing this to a few more things. So thanks so much for watching, friends. We'll catch you in the next UFD Tech video. Cheers.